Gentlemen, nice to see you both. Oh, good to see you, Greta. Hi, Greta. All good right. to be here. All right. Well, I'm going to have to call you Chuck Jr. and Chuck Sr. to make this easy to distinguish. Um, you have a brand new book out that you wrote jointly. Let me start first with you, uh, Chuck Sr. Why did you write the book, Our Sarah? Well, we've been talking about it for a long time, and we wanted to dispel a lot of myths that uh, the press has written about Sarah. This tells her true life story, her ideals, and lots of all true stuff about her. Chuck Jr., I imagine it's very hard. I talked to a lot of uh, candidates' uh, family, and I, I imagine it's, it's hard to sort of sit back and all these years listen to what the media says about your sister, as it is of every, every candidate's family listening to what the media says. But uh, for your family in particular, would you, not, uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree with it. It's been real tough over the years, and, and uh, that's part of the reason that we did this book. Uh, it was our way of kind of setting the record straight. We've got family and friends that have never talked to the media before, and uh, we think we put together something really nice. Chuck Jr., let me ask you, um, you know, what do you think the media, how has the media portrayed your sister, and what do you think is the fair portrayal, big picture? Well, they've taken, uh, they've taken Sarah and basically turned her into a caricature, a lot of the media, not everyone. Um, the, the real picture is one of the hardest working, not one of the hardest working, the hardest working person that I personally have ever met. You know, Todd's right up there with her too. But she's uh, not only raising five children, you know, working 18, 20 hours a day, as you know, um, but she's out there uh, running six miles every day too, or however many miles she's doing. She's just doing so many things in a day that she doesn't get credit for. Chuck Senior, let me jump to the end of the book, it's sort of interesting because at the, at the tail end of the book, I mean, it starts talking about your family and how you moved to Alaska, and the, but the tail end of the book, you talk about how when she was governor, how she was getting bipartisan support, she was getting Democrats to support her, and uh, she seemed to, have a very, I mean, that seemed to have a very sort of workable political career. She then gets on a national stage and all of a sudden becomes highly partisan. Is that a fair description of it? Exactly. She had a 98 percent, or no, uh, 89 percent approval rating before she got on the national scene. After she got on the national scene, came home, she was torn apart by the Democrats in, in, uh, in Alaska. Why do, you think, why do you think that it happened that way? I mean, what, what's different about the national scene, Chuck Sr.? She was in the limelight. There was a lot of jealousy, uh, a lot of envy, I, I think. She was a devout Christian. Uh, she was ostracized for that. She was ostracized for so many different things that, uh, that she stood up for, and she still stands up for those things, too. What, um, I, I'm Chuck Jr., I'm, I know it's tough on you. I know it's, it's tough on your father and your mother, but what about on her children? I mean, this has been, I mean, their lives have been transformed as a result of this. Well, those poor kids have had to grow up in this, and... Uh, and they've developed some pretty tough skin, as you see with, with Bristol's success and, and Willow's off to school now. Track is representing our country in Afghanistan. Um, Piper is uh, the spark plug of the family and, and little, little uh, triggers the light of everybody's life. So I, through all these experiences, the, the kids are, you know, they're shining. They're really doing well. You know, you can't even imagine, I mean, take Trigg, uh, I mean, it, it really doesn't probably get as low as the accusation that Trigg was not, uh, was not uh, Governor Palin's uh, son, right, Chuck Sr.? I mean, that, that's pretty, about as pretty low as you can get. We've seen uh, people parading with signs stating Trigg is not Sarah's uh, child. Um, the news media in Anchorage uh, argued with me. They said there's no way Trigg could be Sarah's uh, Son, they said it's impossible for her to be in Texas. Her water uh, breaks and fly back to Anchorage. They even went as far as to uh, interview the doctor that delivered Trig. That quieted them down a little bit. Is she? And I know that uh, I could tell from reading the book um, and from knowing her that she she makes decisions by herself. I don't think anyone really tells her what to do. But I'm curious. Do you have any thoughts? Is she is she going to go back to politics at all? You know, that's one of the main questions asked of us thousands of times. 
What's her game plan? We truthfully don't know, but don't, don't underestimate her. She'll be back. She'll be back in some category. We don't know what. We've seen this all her life from the second, third grade on. She rises to the occasion. All right, let me loop back now to the beginning of the book and go to Chuck Sr. You, I mean, you were growing up in, I think it was in Idaho, Idaho or living there, and then you uprooted the family and moved off to this wild frontier, the state of Alaska. Um, what prompted that? Well, I've always uh, hunted and fished and uh, part, uh, participated in outdoor activities, and I heard Alaska was a step up from Idaho, and I loved Idaho, but... Uh, that step up really got my attention. I would have got, come up earlier, but I couldn't afford to move. I taught three years in Idaho, and then I came to Alaska and taught several, well, about 25 years in Alaska. Did a lot of outdoor activity, mining, gold mining, uh, hunting, fishing, trapping, guiding. So it's home. We've been there 48 Chuck, years. Chuck Jr., you know, what I, you know what I wanted to see in the book and didn't see in the book? What's that? Is there is no picture of the antler tree at your father's house. Yeah. And uh, and there are there's no there are no pictures of the basement. I've actually been in the basement of your father's house, and it's like a natural history museum down that basement. Um, I I actually went right for the pictures, hoping to see it. I mean, your father. I know he's just sitting there right to your right, but he is he's a fascinating guy. He knows an awful lot about what's uh, about the the natural history of Alaska, doesn't he? Well, uh, you'll get those pictures maybe in a second book. Um, but you're right, and anybody that comes into that house is going to get a history lesson for sure. Um, it's, it, it was amazing growing up with all these experiences and with all Dad's stories, and, and that was a big reason for putting this book together, too, is we wanted to share that with the rest of the country. You know, there's been Jackson. over 100 books written on Sarah, we, we understand, and only three have been totally factual, and this is the fourth one. That'll be totally factual. Two of the two of the four, Sarah wrote herself. Did she vet your book at all? I know that she wrote the forward, but did she vet it at all? No, she said, "Have at it." You know, she trusted us. She said, "It's your your words, your book. You go for it." You know, it's so fascinating. I mean, the, I guess, that, you know, the next book, I'd like to see a little bit about the history of Alaska because Chuck Sr., it's a, as I noted about your basement, that basement, I mean, it's, I, it's extraordinary um, how, you, how you track history through all the artifacts you, you have collected over the years in the mountains and the tundra and everything else of Alaska. It's just fascinating. Um, when are you going to do that book? Well, that's up to Chuck Jr. Uh, he's due for retirement uh, this year, next year. He's already started on another, another book, so you'll see some of those stories there. By the way, the last time I saw you was in a little village of uh, Port Allsworth. You were going to North Korea with the Franklin Graham, and I was going beachcombing down the peninsula, and we just happened to bump into each other. And uh, we brought back five walrus, sets of walrus tusks and hundreds of glass ball, fishing balls from uh, Japan. And it was such a weird place to run into because I think it's about 150 miles uh, west of Anchorage, out in the middle of nowhere, with the only access of these very small planes, and you fly through this dangerous area. So, and running into you was, uh, I think it was actually sort of bizarre to run into anyone at all, let alone someone I knew. Yeah, wasn't that something? <laughs> That was it. Now, you write in the book about, um, about the family going to North Carolina and uh, meeting with Reverend Billy Graham. That was a high point. I mean, it's something you mentioned in the book. That was a high point of my wife's life, I'd say, uh, having dinner uh, and conversing with uh, Billy Graham. She's always uh, been a fan of Billy Graham. I thoroughly enjoyed it, too. Yeah, it, it was something else. Chuck Jr., if my brother and sister uh, were on TV talking about me, uh, I would feel extremely nervous uh, because, you know, they're, you know, they're always, you know, they have a sort of a different view of you than the outside world. I'm curious, are there some stories that you, you threatened to put in the book uh, and that you did not? Sarah's probably sitting on the couch chewing her fingernails right now. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, sure, and there's brother-sister stories that maybe you don't want the rest of the world to know, but... Um, uh, no, I, I pretty much shared everything, and, and, um, and I was happy to do it, and I'm sure she'll be fine with it, too. Well, it's a fun book, and I, I know from having met your family, many, met families a lot uh, in the last 20 years of doing this, is that how the media sometimes portrays families and things are so vastly different than what it is uh, from the inside. And so I hope people read this book, uh, and uh, thank you both for joining me. Thank you, Greta. Thank you. <clears throat> Our pleasure.